Chair, recognize now Mr. Gates for his five minutes of questions. Madam Deputy Mayor, are people more or less safe this year compared to last year in Washington, D.C.? Sorry, I can't say whether they're more or less safe. I can say that crime is up, and so long as anyone doesn't feel safe, then that's an issue for us. Would higher crime rates be one of the more important indicators as to whether or not people are more or less safe? It would be an indicator as to whether or not people feel more or less safe. So it's something that we certainly look at in determining that. I don't know. I think people could feel unsafe even if they were safe. But this doesn't seem to be a delusion, right? Uh, the cases of sexual assault rose 111% over the course of a year. Homicides increased by 38%. Motor vehicle thefts doubled, increasing 106%. Instances of arson, over 125%. And carjackings by 55%. Why do you think that is? There's a host of complex reasons why that's the case. You've heard some. We talk about our ecosystem, policy reasons, right? There do you think are, the soft on crime policies are one reason? I, I don't know that I would say soft on crime policies. What I would say is that there's a number of reforms in policy that have made in the district that have been made in the district that we believe need to be adjusted, which is why there's been a number of proposals from the mayor, um, legislation passed by the council to take a look at where we're getting the type in, of in, impact that we don't want. I, I agree with Mr. App that the only way this works is with collaboration. And so, what do you right. think you would highlight as like the the main uh, policy change that the mayor has proposed that could maybe put some downward pressure on this rising violent crime? Sure, there's a host of um, proposals that the mayor made related to penalty enhancements, to um, aligning uh, penalties for gun crimes with, with federal um, penalties. So there's there's those, but there's also those on information sharing. So, so, so hold on, let's start with those though. But the underlying sure. premise there is that enhanced punishment can have a deterrent effect and reduce crime, right? We absolutely agree with that, yes. That yeah. accountability is an important part of and I'm definitely not blaming you for this because it's not your job. But when we look at the fact that the prosecutor o over the D.C. area is has doubled their declinations, the, like from your standpoint on the front lines in city government, do you, do you think that doubling the number of declinations um, goes in the right direction or the wrong direction? I would say that what we believe is that if MPD has made arrests, that people need to be held appropriately accountable. We always maintain that. Mayor but, but like you're, that. it seems like the underlying premise of appropriately accountable is to have penalty enhancements. That it's not as if you think people are being held too accountable. It's that they're not being held accountable enough, right? There absolutely needs to be accountability for those who engage in violent crime. I, I think Ms. Richards would probably agree with that. Uh, your your testimony was harrowing, but uh, it could really concern me that people might not be willing to do these life-saving, critically important jobs like firefighting and EMS if they feel like they're going into a war zone. You, you, you gave testimony about what it was like to wait on police as you're trying to save people's lives and help them. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I mean, that's, uh, that's the state that we're in right now. You know, I mean, I've, I've waited in excess of 20 minutes before to try to get MPD on scene for a violent call. What do you do for 20 minutes? We stage and we wait because at this point we're no longer going and we're, we're not going to those scenes. And what so happens to the people And so therefore the help? citizens are not getting treated, right? At, they can't have our services because it's not safe for us to go in there. That sounds like life or death to me, that people could actually die because we don't have enough police to keep even our own first responders safe that want to save people's lives. Is it, it should, I mean, is this, or have you been confronted with these type of life or death situations where people can't get the care they need because you're waiting for, essentially you're waiting for, for firepower and cover to be able to go help people? I can say that, that yes, there's been times where we have to wait and like I said, I've waited personally myself in excess of 20 minutes for MPD to arrive on scene. Yeah, I would observe, Mr. Chairman, that DC has some of the strongest gun control laws in the country and uh, increasingly the law abiding people, the people who, who wanna be helpful, who wanna be good neighbors are constrained by those gun control laws. And yet 
the violent criminals are putting Miss Richards and, and all the people who want to do the good work she does in, in graver danger. Uh, and that, uh, that might be something worthy of some federal review. I yield back.